Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us tonight for our talk with Peter Pereira. I'd like to welcome you to the Roach Jones Duff House, which is where I'm tuning in from at 396 County Street in New Bedford. Um, it is, this lecture is part of AHA Night, AHA New Bedford. If you have not, um, if you have not heard of AHA New Bedford, it is, I, I believe, at least 20 years old and, um, and award-winning as a kind of citywide event with lots of cultural things going on the same night, the second Thursday uh, of every month, except January in New Bedford. I did put the link in the chat because if you're looking for other things to do uh, as part of AHA, the link will take you there to all those great activities. Um, so as being part of AHA, we, are, um, we, we have free admission uh, for all of our AHA events, including this lecture tonight. You can see more of what RJD, RJD does for programming um, in our RJD website, which is the link I've put in the chat as well. Our calendar is posted there. And you may think that because we're in a pandemic, we're not doing anything, um, but we are doing lots of uh, digital programming like this, virtual programming, and, and some safe outdoor programming. So please check that out at our website, rjdmuseum.org. So uh, with that, I wanna to turn to our speaker tonight who I'm really happy to host. Peter Pereira is an award-winning photographer from New Bedford, Mass. Uh, his images have graced the pages of, and this is a long list, so get ready, Time, Newsweek, US News and World Report, Vogue, New York Times, Le Monde, The Observer UK, Wall Street Journal, Los Angeles Times, MSNBC.com, CNN.com, ABCNews.com, FoxNews.com, CNN, Anderson Cooper 360, and various other international media outlets. Peter has been named New England Photographer of the Year a record 11 times. In 2016, he was given the medal of, uh, I'm going to say this with a French accent, Enfant de Henrique <laughs> by the president of Portugal. That is not a Portuguese accent. That was my French accent. Um, and I, I hope that when he begins his talk, he'll explain this one line in his bio, which says he was educated to make computers, uh, to make computers run, but he was born to make people think. So with that, I leave it to Peter Pereira. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, first and foremost, uh, I want to thank Don for giving me the opportunity um, to participate in these uh, events that the Roach Jones Duff House are uh, hosting. Um, it's a real honor for me because I've been fortunate in my 20 years at the Standard Times uh, to photograph many times at the Roach Jones Duff House. And if ever, for those of you who have never been, I highly, highly recommend uh, paying a visit, um, especially if you like history um, and you like uh, to see, you know, not not just what New Bedford is now, but uh, how the city, uh, the importance that the city has had throughout the course of history. Now, Don has asked me to explain what what does that line mean? Uh, well, actually, uh, I went to uh, the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth and I graduated in 1992 with a degree in computer engineering. Uh, I never took a photography class in my life, um, but deep down inside, that was always what I wanted to do. I wanted to be specifically a photojournalist. I wanted to document the world. Um, I wanted to have an impact uh, with my photography in the sense that I wanted to tell stories, um, but I also wanted to capture moments um, with the understanding that the moments that I'm capturing photographically are basically records of our time. They, without putting too much weight on what it is that I do, uh, in essence, they are uh, histor a historical record. Um, they are vignettes into what was happening during my time. Um, and if you want an example, uh, we always think that everything else that has happened throughout the course of history is infinitely more important than what's happening now. I mean, we all read our history books. Um, but then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, 2020 uh, turns into one of those years that are long going to be remembered um, historically uh, because of the significance of the events that have happened uh, between uh, the pandemic that we are all going through now, uh, a presidential election, um, the Black Lives Matters movement, and a host of other events that are no doubt going to be recorded in history books that our kids someday are going to read. 
and hopefully some of those events um, are going to be documented with my photos. And you know, I take a real proud uh, pride um, in in calling myself someone who lives in New Bedford. I love this city, um, and I've been fortunate. Like I said, for 20 years, when I decided to turn around and and do photojournalism professionally every single day, not only on weekends. Um, and I decided to switch careers. It was always with that intent of, of documenting something that hopefully I can just tell the stories without any words being required. Um, so that's what I've been doing. And once again, I love this city. Uh, it's got its issues and you're going to see some of them um, because the power of photojournalism is you get to tell all the stories in a format that needs no translation. You don't have to understand the language. You don't have to be able to read. All you have to do is be able to see. And if you see and you look at something, the power of photography is it gives the viewer the ability of going into someone else's shoes, going into a place they've never been before, or the ability of seeing something that they're very used to seeing in a different way. So sometimes we drive by the same place a thousand times. As a matter of fact, Earlier today, a good friend of mine, Neil, who's part of the South Shore Camera Club, who invite me every year to do a talk, you know, he's like, Peter, how do you stay so motivated? Um, and I told him, you know, the funny part is I never go out looking for a photograph. I just go out with the intent of seeing, of looking at the world and trying to see every single thing like for the first time. How is that possible with over 20 years of photographing this particular community that I can drive down Union Street and see something for the first time. But it happens every day. You just have to be ready to accept it. And when you see it, that's when the cameras come out. So without further ado, what I'd like to do is I, I've compiled, I'm gonna keep all my, my entire presentation of images to material that I shot in 2020. So everything that you're gonna see is only photos that I photographed in this particular year since January. And you're gonna see that the first set of photos, it's almost like, well, by the way, these are not particularly in chronological order. I should, I should clarify that. But you're gonna see a lot of photos that the world looks, this looks wonderful, right? Nobody's wearing masks, everybody's going about their business. But then you're gonna start seeing that there's definitely a shift in the way that things are, are happening and, and the way that uh, members of the community are inter interacting with each other. So I'm gonna start sharing the screen and then, I can I can speak as we as we go forward here. All right, so let me see here. All right, can you guys all see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so what I did was I compiled. I'm going to start uh, by showing you guys um, my favorite photos that I shot in 2020. Um, and again, almost all of these photos uh, were taken. Um, within our community. So New Bedford, uh, Fairhaven, Mattapoiset, uh, Dartmouth, Westport. Basically all this material was shot. You're gonna see a lot of photographs of, of things that you have seen many times before. But keep in mind, every one of these being a photo, the, the beauty of, like for instance, this photo I shot today, right? Um, the beauty of photojournalism and, some, and something that needs to absolutely be clarified and be brought to light is the difference between photojournalism and every other type of photography. Unlike any other type of photography, photojournalism is the only photographic medium that the photographer has no control over anything in front of him or her. So none of these photos are staged, they're not posed, I'm not telling people what to do, I'm not telling people to slow down, stop. I'm simply there as an observer to document what it is that I see. And, and hopefully I can, I can do that in an interesting way that lets the viewer maybe see something in a way they've, they've never seen before. And that's what I take a lot of pride in. Like for instance, like this photo here. This is a, an interesting, first it just looks like a photograph of a silhouetted, person at a window speaking on a phone. But then the more you look at this photo, the more you start seeing that there's something wrong in this photo. Well, you can see that the tables are empty. There's nobody here. 
you can see the flag through the window. Well, here's the interesting thing. This photo was shot on the very first day that the pandemic um, regulations were imposed on restaurants. And this was shot at T. Maria's European Cafe in downtown New Bedford. And she's on the phone, desperate to figure out what she can and can't do. These were very difficult moments. So Yes, a caption would go a long way into explaining it, but the more you look at a photograph, the more you're able to see. Obviously, access, like here, I found out that the Mayflower uh, was in town. Made a couple of calls, next thing I know, I'm on a boat, and I got to follow it. And why did the Mayflower show up? Well, the, it turns out the Mayflower was never, never supposed to stop in New Bedford, but why did it stop in New Bedford? Well, I asked the captain, why did you stop in New Bedford? His response, was fantastic. He said, well, because New Bedford is the best port. And I was like, tell me why is it the best port? And he goes, well, we were supposed to be in transition uh, between, um, I believe he said, uh, what did he say? Newport. And they were going across the canal to do some sea trials. But there was a storm front coming through. And he basically said, the only port that can accommodate us. And I know that there's not gonna be any damage with the Mayflower that had just been uh, restored, getting bounced around as New Bedford. So you learn these things and you know it puts a smile on your face if you care about the city as much as I do. Um, there are difficult moments, like this woman's homeless. And she went to a shelter um, on a rainy, cold day. This is still back in, in I think, March right at the beginning where the pandemic started. Uh, and because now the shelter didn't let anyone in, uh, she, was, she had asked someone to be inside their car to have coffee in the morning. There's a lot of things, again, that, that the city still needs to, um, to address. But as a photographer, I go in with the same passion and the same commitment to telling the story, regardless of what it is. If the President of the United States comes to New Bedford, which I photographed before, I'll photograph him with the same, um, you know, with, with the same commitment as I do to, to this woman here who basically is, is living on the streets. Um, there's quite a few photos, so I'm just gonna keep them rolling. But again, as the pandemic came, um, it, it became more and more difficult to do what I do, which I love to be in people's spaces. I love to bring you to, um, I love to bring you to a place maybe you've never been before. Um, and, and the only way to do that is to be really close. Uh, shoot, in my, in my case, I love shooting with a wide angle camera, um, which means that to get a great photo, you really need to be close. And like, like that other photo that uh, we were just looking at, like this one here. Um, without being out on the streets constantly, driving around, you're just not gonna find moments like this. Uh, this is actually Route 6 in Mattapoisett, and this ginormous turtle, this snapping turtle, was trying to make its way across, and this concerned citizen decided to stop her car, put on the, 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 her hazard lights, and call the animal control shelter to come and, you know, save this animal, because this, this turtle was definitely going to get squashed. So, you know, I mean, I spend a lot of time driving around. Um, and walking around too. Uh, and that's really the only way to effectively, you know, document a community as vibrant as the one that we have. Our waterfront is really like no other waterfront. I mean, this I shot just a couple of weeks ago and the sun was coming up, it was early in the morning and he's up there like sandblasting the masts uh, to put a fresh coat of paint. Um, but the interesting thing is, I mean, sp speaking from a visual perspective, straight up, uh, why is, is it a good photograph? Well, besides the obvious um, dynamicism of the light, it's also a very, what's known as a clean image. There's no background um, that's creating noise and distracting you. Um, and the way that I shot it, it's, it's very head on, it's very straight. So all the symmetry and the lines really subdivide the photograph into different parts. But again, everyone's seen the waterfront. I mean, that's what New Bedford is renowned for ever since whaling times. We have the most vibrant waterfront. We forget that sometimes. But I make a point of going by the waterfront maybe once or twice a week 
to see what I see, even though I've photographed almost every boat that's out there. Uh, and it, it, there's always things to find. So it, if you like photography, uh, I, I would say just literally go explore with no agenda at all. But then like, for instance, here, this was the, uh, the Black Lives Matters uh, march that happened in Mattapoisett. Um, and sure, yes, I got photos of the people and stuff, but I'm always challenging myself to create an image that forces the viewer to really pay a little bit more attention and not just be like, oh, okay, there's another photo of someone holding a sign. I want the person to be brought into the, into the image. And in this case, the lines on the ground are bringing you to the people who are doing the walking. And this is actually Route 6. And you know we've all gone by this intersection a thousand times. And then from there, you can start slowly reading the signs and you can look at the people and the way that they're standing and walking and their feet and so on, or the police officer in the back. Like here, here's another great example of how the community has reacted uh, to the pandemic. All of a sudden, I found out that these graffiti artists had permission to paint this wall. So uh, I went there once, the wall wasn't really uh, very far along, so I kept on coming back, and this is what I got. They weren't quite done, he was still working on the details, as you can see, but the more you look at the photograph, um, the more interesting it becomes. And you can see the, the, the coronavirus spores on the bottom left there and all over the place. And when I asked him, I'm like, wow, that's really powerful, you know? And, and he's like, well, you know, I, when, as, the, as the coronavirus disappears, I plan on coming back and painting flowers over where the, the spores are. And little stories like that, I mean, they go a long way into, you know, telling the story of where the community is, is now. Um, like this photo here, I literally shot it just a couple of weeks ago too. Uh, here's a woman through a door, uh, through the window of her house, and she's making masks for the hospital. Uh, this photo, I happened to be walking by, barbershop. Uh, look at this one, flag day. They were putting up a ginormous flag. You have to be ready for everything. And, but you also have to be will, uh, willing to tell a story in an interesting, dynamic way. Because the big difference is I hold myself up to a, a very high standard. And I force myself to do that by saying the following myself. If someone sees this in the newspaper the next day, are they going to be saying to themselves, I could have done a better job if I had a camera? If, if, if I feel that, then I haven't done my job. I have to show people stuff, material, that they don't have access to, but I have to still do it in a very, very interesting way. Like this here. Um, this one is at the First Baptist Church in downtown New Bedford. I was driving by and these folks were putting up these little flags. So I decided um, to go and photograph them putting up the flags. And I didn't know what the flags were, but visually they were very interesting. So it turns out that the flags were uh, about victims of gun violence. Regardless, I spent some time there and then after they're done, all of a sudden, they got together in a little circle and they, and they, you know, they did a little prayer for the victims of gun violence. I could have just left after five or 10 minutes of shooting what I thought were really interesting photos. But I, I, take, I take a lot of you know, pride in you know, being the first in, being the last out. Because that's really the only way that you get a true sense of what it is that you just experienced. And then the more you look at this photo, the more you discover between the color of the flags, what they say on the flags, the expressions on their face, that comes with depth and that comes with the ability as a photographer to use the equipment to the maximum of its capabilities. Um, again, you don't know what it is that you're going to find. Every single day is interesting. Uh, South End of New Bedford, people exercising. Like here's a good one. I found out that this young teacher was uh, going to have her very first class ever. She's, she's never taught before. Um, she became a teacher at the Pachico School, no, not the Pachico School, at the C-Lab School. I forgot what the name of the school is now, I'm sorry. Um, and she was gonna hold her very first lesson. So I asked permission, I got there, and I hung out with her as she goes on Zoom, just like us, 
And there she is logging onto her computer and she's gonna see her students for the very first time. Now, the interesting thing is, she actually came to this particular school herself when she was little. So it's like, you know, the cycle of life. But again, the symmetry, the way that the photograph and the subject are positioned, the more you look at it, the more you discover between the little rocking chair that her grandmother made for her, what's written on the wall and uh, on the whiteboard. You can see that she's a third grade teacher. You can see that her name is Miss Lima and all the various decorations that she did in preparation for her proud moment of becoming a first year teacher. Um, I mean, I hope, I hope you guys um, get a sense of what it is that's happening in our city um, and what it is that's happening, hopefully in a way that's captivating enough to keep you looking. Uh, we've all seen the little vacuum. If you haven't, that's a pretty cool thing. Sometimes I'll get a call and it might be, it might be a, a weekend, which I usually don't work, but I found out um, that this uh, a wrestler, a local wrestler, and had passed away. And I, uh, last year I did a, um, a photo essay on a different wrestler and he had called me. He's like, hey, you know, uh, this wrestler who is a really good friend of the entire wrestling community, he just passed away unexpectedly. So I went there and the um what this photo does is it, it puts you in, in, into this very emotional moment for for the mom wife of this gentleman and his son and yes it's hard to photograph things like this um because i get emotionally um captive just like you do looking at the photo and therein lies the power of photojournalism is that it can invoke emotions Regardless if you know what it is that you're, the people that you've seen in the photographs. Like, that's interesting. I would not want to be in that little boat when that gigantic barge, uh, you know, uh, sails on by. But they're still waving at each other. They're, they're still having fun. Um, like, sometimes I'll be, I'll say to myself, you know, today I'm going to go to Peyton Aram. I have no idea why I should go to Peyton Aram. But I did. This was just a few days ago. and. There I am. I mean, now the stores obviously are dealing, the different shops that have recently opened up in Pitnerim, they're dealing with a, with a pandemic uh, just like everyone else. And they've taken some novel approaches um, because some people don't like to go inside the store in a confined space. So they've literally brought their stuff out onto the sidewalk. And in, in this photo here, I mean, this again is an example of how patience pays off, especially if you're a photographer or if you like photography. I could have just taken a photo of the handbags, but that really isn't good enough. I mean, photojournalism is, is based on the idea of capturing people. Yes, people. It's all about people. So I sat there for about 20, 30 minutes until someone walked by. And then the trick is to get it just as she's walking between the gap of, of those particular uh, pocketbooks. Um, different vantage points. There's just so much to discover. Um, like this right here, this was shot two days ago. I, I was in Fairhaven and this gentleman who's uh, the custodian of uh, Fairhaven Town Hall was putting out the flags uh, in preparation for Veterans Day. I mean, our community um, is, is incredible. We have such a variety of, of people, of cultures. And I mean, I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate that there's literally always something like this photo here. I just shot this today. Um, and this is another example how people are adapting to the times. And this woman here, she's a, a driving instructor. So she's going to go to pick up the student. Um, she gets there. I was driving behind in my car because I couldn't be in the car. Um, she got there. She got out of the dri uh, driver's side, pulls out a plastic uh, wrap, and starts wrapping the seat in plastic. I mean... These are innovative solutions to keep the business going. And, and someday we're going to look at photos like this and we're going to say to ourselves, wow, you know, I mean, that was an, an incredible year. But, I mean, one of the things that sometimes is forgotten is you're looking at these photos and you're like, wow, that's interesting. But sometimes 
it's easy to forget that it took someone with a camera to be there. Um, and as you know, I mean, if you go to my website, you're going to see that I've done international work. Um, and most of it is documenting uh, poverty around the world. And some of these places are really difficult. And even, even here, I mean, some of the places that uh, I've documented, I do it because I feel that th these are stories that need to be told. Um, sometimes you run into situations like this that you'd rather not see. Um, there, there was two fatalities in that crash there. Um, and you do it, and you try to do it in a way that, uh, I mean, sometimes, you know, people accuse the media of, of being like, you know, like wolves. Um, that's, that's not the case. It really isn't. I mean, I knew what had happened here. Um, I'm not looking for photos of bodies or anything. I'm looking for a photograph that shows what it is that happened. Um, and in this case, those people came out through the door of their home. You can see them back here. And this is what they saw. And I mean, these are disturbing things that happen in every single city. Um, we're almost done with this particular uh, slideshow. And I have some other things um, to show you guys. Like I went to a mass with, with no people in it and he was still conducting it. Um, I mean, look at like this photograph there, you could see the different layers through the mirrors. Uh, they were collecting laptops. Um, and yes, sometimes letters do uh, add to the image, right? These photos here were literally shot just a couple of days ago. Um, but there's, all, there's always interesting things to photograph. Like that photo here, I shot that just a little while ago uh, at Buttonwood Park. That's not why I stopped. I did not see them. I had stopped because I noticed those guys um, with these riding lawnmowers, um, basically they were riding over the leaves to get rid of the leaves. Um, there were huge piles of leaves at Buttonwood Park. And I look and I see these two little guys uh, with rain jackets, yellow rain jackets. And I took a couple of shots and then she all of a sudden uh, picked one up and you could just see the love happening there. You know, it, this, that's that's what it's all about it's it's capturing uh interesting moments or moments that people see all the time in an interesting way that's what photojournalism is really all about but you have to have access like this woman here um i decided to do a piece she was um she was struggling with cancer um and i decided to do a piece on her she was a former teacher at new bedford high school and I took these photos, and shortly thereafter, unfortunately, she passed away. And I can, I can almost guarantee it. I was probably, these are probably some of her last photos that exist. And, and while I don't know her personally, I can, I, can, I, can, I can assure you that just looking at it, it moves me. It's funny, but, you know, relationships um, are everything into giving me access. Without, without the community leaders, the fire department, the police department, school department, and many, many people, without their understanding of what it is that I do, I would not have access to almost anything. Um, it goes a long way into building these relationships with the members of the community. Not, not, not changing anything about the way you approach things, but the more you do and the more you prove that all you're doing is documenting things. There is no bias, there is no angle, there is nothing. I just simply document with my cameras these events that I think people should talk about, people should look at, people should see. And if maybe you can't go to a place, I can bring you there with my photographs. And let me show you something else. Uh, hold on here. So obviously one of, not one of, the biggest talking point of uh, 2020 is going to be the COVID situation. And for the longest time, I, I asked the uh, St. Luke's Hospital if I could have access. Um, 
and at no at this point nobody in the country was having access to any kind of hospital and understandably i mean this is a situation with a pandemic that hospitals were really not sure where this thing was going to go they really were not sure how to treat the patients um and they needed the less amount of confusion as far as another photographer in their midst who could potentially you know cause someone to suffer because they're not supposed to be there um they really thought about it and ultimately they called me back and they gave me access to all three of the south coast health hospitals so charlton toby and st luke's this is all a a shot at st luke's over the course of a day um and why did i really want to do this i mean obviously because uh, because of what it is i mean this is again a historical moment that we're all living through Uh, but i also wanted to show people the reality of the event that unless you're there you don't have access to as we know all hospitals are still to this day really closed off to visitors unless you have a procedure there you're not going to you're not going to be inside so by opening their doors to me in essence what they're doing is they're bringing all of you all of us inside to take a peek at our heart and the challenges that the healthcare workers are going through and i'll tell you right now there were no closed doors. They let me have total access to the entire hospital, all three of them, Um, which as a journalist, um, when you have that much transparency, it's really quite quite incredible. Uh, Because because they also understand that I'm not there to take photographs of patients' faces or, or identifiable characters like this. I'm there to document as best as I can while still uh, treating the patient with the anonymity that that they deserve, um, and like, here's an interesting one. You see this photo here. This nurse is uh, is setting up some equipment, but in the background, on this bulletin board wall, is actually this photo here. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but I actually shot that photo in Honduras, of a doctor that I met there. Um, doing an, an ear check on a youngster in a small village in Honduras. Uh, so, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, I, I just want the photographs to tell the story. And if people are moved by them and if people think that, that everyone else should see it, that's fantastic. Um, but without the access, without the ability of stepping into someone else's shoes, um, then I, I really can't do the job. And it takes trust on both sides. Um, and, and it takes the ability to just let go. Uh, it's hard for a hospital to have a media, especially one with a camera, to show the world everything that's happening. Um, so a huge kudos and a huge thank you to the, the South Coast Hospital Group for giving me the access that they did. I mean, it was one of those you know, one of those things that if you have the opportunity, if you go to my website, you'll be able to see all the photos that I shot at all three hospitals. Um, And there's a lot of material there. So let me, another another thing that uh, besides still photos, which is what I'm all about, if you go to YouTube um, and you type YouTube Pereira photo, um, I have a channel on YouTube. So if you want to see how I photographed something, like my latest episode is actually this here, which is how I photographed um, those two gentlemen that you saw on a foggy day in Mattapoisin. So this is with the idea, um, well, you might have to watch this yourself because it's a little bit laggy right now, but this will show you how it is that I approach. Um, hold on, I've got an idea. Oops, all right, so I can get rid of that. Um, this will show you how it is that I approach uh, shooting the photos. Um, but it also, the, the reason I do it is so that you can see the very community that I take a lot of pride in, but it also shows you how I did it.
morning. I'm in Mattapoison Harbor, and that's Peter over there, and that's his son Silas, Triad Boatwork. And you guys are picking up a boat, right? We're gonna wait for the winter. So that's what Mattapoison looks like, and on a really foggy day. How did I end up on a boat on a foggy day in Mattapoison? I was driving by, decided to stop in just because of the way that the weather was. And I noticed that Peter, who I've met quite a few times before, was doing boat runs with his son to pull them out of the water. I asked if I could come along and well, it didn't take long for me to be on the boat heading out for a run. Okay, you're on a boat and you have limited workspace. Look for interesting angles. I really needed to get up high so I can get the men into the context of the surroundings. I started by photographing them head on, and as you can see here, the only interesting thing is that dock. So look around. I mean, okay, let me go to the left, see what that looks like. Uh, probably not very good because there's nothing interesting as far as boats or anything on the opposite side. So I moved over to the right, and you can see here it was just a matter of waiting for their heads to be between the two elements, and in this case, a buoy and a boat. You need to be able to anticipate. You know he's gonna jump on that boat, so wait for that moment. You see his foot almost touching the boat? That, along with the tension in his arm, really broadcasts the motion. Silas was trying to figure out what key started this boat, so it made for a really interesting photo with all the fog. This is another example of anticipation. Peter is making his way around the boat that they are picking up to head back to the pier. I was waiting for his son, who was pulling anchor, to come into the frame. It's just a matter of time. Sometimes you just gotta put the cameras down and enjoy the moment yourself. I mean, just look at the uh, opportunities that we have as photographers. We, we get to experience what other people do every single day. And I can tell you, this is probably not a very pleasant task when it's freezing outside or when the wind is howling. But sometimes just enjoy How it. How are you doing today? Going well, thank you. So the weather is kind of weird, right? Very foggy. Very foggy. So it's like, what, 53, 54 degrees, something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. So we're in Mattapoiset, and at one point, what you see here uh, was actually where whale ships were built, right here where we are now. And you've been at this for a while. So you can see there, that's just an example, and I don't want to... <laughs> you can check out the, the, the website, and uh, you can check out uh, the YouTube channel, and there's a lot of episodes there, including... Uh, a lot of the, the different um, things that make uh, New Bedford unique. Uh, you're going to see guys uh, fixing nets. You're going to see uh, the panorama that was shot exactly 100 years to the day. I, I shot an exact same, um, exact same panorama 100 years later, and I, and I shot a video of how I did it. Um, so, I, I mean, I, if you guys have some questions, I'd love to hear some questions right about now. Thank you, Peter. I'm going to say thank you first, and um, we will we will stop the recording and uh, go ahead and open it up for Q and A.